Hello racing fans, I'm Chip from the Digital Grandstand and this is Beyond the Finish Line, the Bahrain GP 2017 edition. Well, that was an enjoyable race. Yes, of course it had some dull moments, but so does even the Marvel Cinematic Universe films. It was a great race with plenty of action, massive disappointments, brilliant opportunities and uh, yeah some rather miserable reliability for you-know-who. So, who are the stars and who are the flops of this race? Let's find out. It's, um, well, it's starting to get painful to watch McLaren. It, it really does. We're, we're way past the point when we made fun of their issues. Now it's just, yeah, sad. Fernando Alonso is driving his heart out, race by race, getting the car where it has no place to be. He fights with cars almost 100 bhp more than the Honda power unit. He's, he's doing everything he can, and what does he get for all that hard work? A big ass cold of nope. And yeah, well that and, uh, and one of the biggest uh, paychecks in F1. So that's nice. But seriously, the way he drives. He's as amazing as ever. One of the latest breakers in the corners. He has a unique style where he takes a corner in a V angle, not the usual U-shaped trajectory that uh, most of the field are using. Uh, that way he can extend the length of the straight line that comes after the corner. And uh, in this race he used this style to such a great extent not only he defended, well, brilliantly, but even made some overtaking done in that McLaren, which is which, top job, top job, man. But of course, this is, this is Alonso we're talking about, a racer widely regarded as one of the top ones ever in F1, and, and frankly, he has nothing to prove, not to himself, not to the fans, not to the team. He's still here in F1 because he enjoys it. That's, that's his sole reason, and right now, well, it's tough to enjoy DNFing all the time, right? On the other side of the garage, though, things are looking even more wretched. How can, how can a youngster like Stoffel Van Dorn prove his worth when the car is so shit? Yes, Alonso can sort of drive around the problem, but that's his MO, that's what Alonso does best. Stoffel has virtually no experience in F1, he, he was so protected by McLaren to the extent that they fired Magnussen, and he, because of that reason he has huge pressure on him, and he can't do anything to prove his worth. Final note on, uh, on McLaren, geez I've talked about them for ages, was Alonso right to make that statement? You know which one, I've never raced with less power in my life. I have to say he was. He, he has to motivate the team and especially Honda to work harder. He does his job in the car, the team is the one that's not delivering on their promises. We move on. Right now and uh, in the foreseeable future, Mercedes is looking rather good. Hamilton is one of the top three racers in F1 and uh, with young talents like uh, Pascal Verlein and uh, Esteban Ocon, things are looking, are looking good. Uh, Ocon delivered yet again points for Force India, and my god, Verlein, welcome back, man. P11 in basically a one-year-old car. Amazing performance, and also, he was, he was the only one to make a one-stop strategy work. Bravo! Great performances again by, uh, by Massa and especially Perez. Massa got right up there with, uh, with the Mercs, the Ferraris, the Red Bulls at the start, which is, which is quite an achievement in that Williams. And, uh, and Perez coming all the way from 18th on the grid to finish 7th. Another great drive courtesy of his uh, brilliant driving style that keeps the rear tires alive for an ungodly amount of time. They may not admit it, but they are quite frankly, number one drivers in their respective teams, and, and rightfully so. Which brings us neatly to the front of the grid, and the ever-present discussion of uh, Mercedes and Ferrari. 
are they having a designated number one and number two drivers in the team? Well, they will never admit it, but yes, Vettel and Hamilton are the best drivers in F1 at the moment, in the best machines. Simple as that. Bottas and, uh, and Raikkonen are there purely to support them, and uh, yeah, if anything was to happen to the number one driver, to make sure that they are there to make the most of the situation. But is this the right approach? Again, I have to say, yes. In the Ferrari camp, Raikkonen is well past his, his prime. Uh, he's a solid, dependable pair of hands with enough experience to write several books, but, uh, but those crucial two tenths that separate very good racers from the great ones are no longer in, uh, in Kimi's catalog. As for Mercedes, well, firstly, Bottas is on a one-year deal contract. He knows that, we know that, he's there because neither Verline nor Ocon were deemed ready for a top seat. Come 2018, I expect Bottas to be out of there, really. But, but more importantly, and specifically at this race, his pace was well off Hamilton's. After he let his teammate pass, Hamilton disappeared into the distance. Bottas, Bottas might have had a problem with the car, obviously. But that's even more of a good reason to have him move over for Lewis. Look, look at Monaco last year. Nico Rosberg was uh, struggling, Hamilton was, that day, in a different league. Uh, what did the team decide? That's right, move over Nico. Now, the Red Bulls. I don't want to mention them that much, because uh, this, this race was, uh, yeah, quite poor for them. It started well enough, yes, especially Max Verstappen's first lap. That was brilliant. But Ricardo was, uh, yeah, was was nowhere really, and uh, and Verstappen wouldn't have done much better even if he didn't retire with uh, with brakes failure. Now the secondary battle in F1 right now, and if you ask me, the more enjoyable one, the midfield, with uh, Mercedes and Ferrari right at the top and uh, Red Bull a strong third in the pecking order, the teams from fourth to eighth are rather close together. Force India, Williams, Toro Rosso, Renault and Haas are all very, very good in different areas. Most of them have an unofficial number one driver and uh, this battle is set to continue all season long. Which is tasty. Finally, this week sees a rather rare sight in uh, Formula 1. An in-season test in Bahrain. That's right, all teams are staying there for a few more days to do a uh, two-day test at uh, the Shakir circuit. And for me, the big question for these days is, can Force India and especially Red Bull get to the bottom of their respective issues? Force India are having problems in uh, understanding why there are differences in the wind tunnel model work and the real-life car. And uh, Red Bull, yeah. The newly lead designed car is a massive disappointment right now, quite frankly. They will look to sort that out fast. And yeah, those were the main topics from Bahrain. Like I've said, uh, a very good race. Overtaking, again, was more enjoyable. Not that many DRS assisted ones. And uh, not one, but two battles that are set to continue all season long. So, finally, Verline, welcome back, you were missed. McLaren, do something, anything, and stop wasting Alonso's time and talent. Vettel, Hamilton, get your elbows out, because this is on. Same for Mercedes and Ferrari. I've been Chip, you can find me on Twitter at Chip underscore DGS. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on the Digital Grandstand.